On July 7th, 2024, I accompanied Sylvia Salone, Executive Director of New Jersey Forest Watch, and Dr. Sharon Wander, co-founder of Wander Ecological Consultants, on a field survey of Stand 9, one of the timber cuts in the Sparta Mountain Wildlife Management Area. The Sparta Mountains, along with Hamburg Mountain to the north, form the northwestern edge of the New Jersey Highlands Physiographic Province. Some 20 miles to the east are the Ramapo Mountains, the eastern edge of the Highlands. Between these mountain ranges lay the largest extent of mature forest in northern New Jersey, approximately 340 square miles of the least fragmented, the most species diverse, high integrity forest in the state. Since 2017, the Sparta Mountain Wildlife Management Area has been managed under a forest stewardship plan written by New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. The primary goal of the 10-year plan is to convert 4 to 18 percent of the park's 3,500 acres of mature forest into young forest, an increasingly controversial forest management technique intended to enhance the biodiversity of the forest. We wanted to see how the forest was regenerating a few years after it was cut. We question the value of such interventions in mature, relatively healthy forests, where heavy equipment is brought in to the forest interior and the felled wood is taken out because it comes at a great cost. Wildlife habitats are destroyed, sensitive ecologies are disrupted, Previously undisturbed soils are overturned, providing new footholds for invasive species. Stand number nine is one of 32 stands identified in the Forest Stewardship Plan slated for interventions. The prescription for stand nine was a 10-acre shelterwood cut intended to preserve 40 to 60 percent of the canopy. But as you can see, most of the trees are cut down. The operation was completed in March 2022. Our site visit was conducted a little over two years later. In 1899, Cornelius Vermeule, on a project for the New Jersey State Geologist, compiled a map of the forest cover in northern New Jersey. The resulting map represented 30 to 50 years of growth since the height of deforestation, when almost every forest in northern New Jersey had been cut down for charcoaling or for land clearing for development and agriculture. The Vermeule forest maps show us that the lands that were forested in 1899, and if they are still forests today, they were likely never cleared for agriculture or development. Today, these maps help identify the locations of complex soils that are being investigated for being naturally resistant to invasive species and where a region's rarest plants might be found. Locating Stand 9 on the Vermule map, we can see that it was forested in 1899 with a maturing forest cover, that the forest was never disturbed in any large scale or mechanized operation, and that the soils are complex quite possibly naturally resistant to invasions, unless and until they are disturbed by us today. The access road for Stand 9 begins at the Edison Monument on Edison Road in Sparta Township. Thomas Edison had constructed a unique iron ore processing facility here located near a complex of iron mines. Today, a forest has reemerged over Edison's works. The Stand 9 cut is about half a mile from the monument along a well-traveled hiking trail, which had to be widened and graded to serve as an access road so the equipment could get to the site and the felled trees hauled out. Plenty of invasive plants are along the trail in the vicinity of Edison Road. Close to the road, we observe multiflora rose, garlic mustard, mugwort, Japanese stiltgrass, and plantain. 
but as we traveled deeper into the forest, we expected them to disappear, according to a baseline survey of Stand 9 reported in the Forest Stewardship Plan there were no widespread plant invasives at the stand before the cut. Once we arrived at the cut, we observed invasive plants not reported in the baseline survey. Also, we noticed something very interesting in the cut. There were a great deal of stump sprouts or coppice growth on the trunks of the cut trees. Much of the stump sprouts were in leaf, and almost all of it had evidence of being browsed by deer. This brought up a disturbing thought. Prior to the cut, all of what is now being eaten by deer had been inaccessible because it was up in the canopy. After the cut, that layer of leaves was now at browse level. Ten acres of new deer food was nourishing the population of deer. To what extent? Will an already destructive density of deer expand to even more destructive levels? Not only has the existing deer herd been attracted to the site because deer prefer forest edges as created by the cut, we fear that an expanded population of deer browsing even more saplings will prevent the regeneration of this forest. An expansion of the deer herd will also have consequences far into the surrounding forest. These cuts are justified as attracting declining populations of songbirds that prefer early successional forests. But we observed only two individual songbirds within the cut, eastern wood peewee and eastern towhee, two bird species that are neither threatened, endangered, nor of special concern. Although we were past the peak of breeding season, more activity would have been expected if the site was as attractive as claimed. Nor did we note any forest interior birds bringing their young to feed in this habitat, which is another justification for these cuts. Many large canopy trees over 100 years old were cut here at a time when large trees are so crucial to our climate concerns. The latest science tells us that larger trees with their large leaf area absorb far more carbon annually than young trees. The latest science also tells us that 40% of the carbon stored in forest soils is lost as a result of logging disturbances. On our return to the Edison Monument, where we had left our vehicles, we paid closer attention to what was growing alongside the trail. This is what was observed. Invasive plants establishing deep into the forest, far from the road where they are not typically found. What this suggests to us is that the 10 acres of management that occurred at Stand 9 will not regenerate successfully because the evidence suggests that overabundant deer and the establishment of non-native invasive plants will severely challenge a returning forest and less expensive resources were devoted to excluding deer from the site and removing the invasives strategies that have no evidence of being implemented. No forest that can support the biodiversity of the forest that was cut down will emerge here. Only time will tell what the consequences will be for the larger forest for bringing invasives and abundant deer so deeply into the forest interior.
Thank you.